I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye a yarn cake with some acid dye powders. The yarn we're using is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I wound the 100 grams of yarn onto my like ball winder here, and I could wind it again to make a much looser cake. I tried to wind as slow as possible so the cake wouldn't be too tight, but I think we're gonna roll with this. And I'm curious what I might be able to insert into it. I don't know how well this will go, but we'll see. And so my plan today is to try to take some of these dye powders, insert them into the center of the cake, and then we're gonna submerge the cake and see what happens. <laughs> In theory, this should help some us get more color beyond just what's outside on the surface, even though that is likely what will end up getting the most color. Uh, but we should see more things towards the center, in theory, in theory. But especially since the superwash yarn does absorb color pretty quickly overall, uh, if I were to just add color to the outside, we would see that mostly just around the outside of the cake and it would be like a little bit of a gradient and then a lot of whatever's in the center. Similarly, if we were to inject liquid dyes in and a separate color on the outside, it would almost feel like we had two different colorways stuck together. So my hope is to kind of bridge things somehow. At least that's the idea in my brain. Pre-orders for the 2023 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series are now available. Starting June 5th, we will have a special event with new yarn dyeing videos every night featuring mini skein sets and even sock blanks. You can pre-order yarn sets that come with 100 grams of yarn, 5 20 gram mini skeins, a lot of fun extras. They're all around a very special to me theme. And there's a lot of add-ons for full skeins and those sock blanks I mentioned. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, and you'll find links down in the video description. Our yarn cake is completely dry, so the powders that I add to it aren't going to start striking to the yarn in any kind of way until we go and add our yarn into the pot and start bringing liquid in. But I do have a yarn mop off camera. This is another skein of stroll that I just pre-soaked in water with no acid. And if I need to have extra powder on anything, I can wipe onto here. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna put powder into the container, and I realized I have a bunch of these little itty bitty scoops. I think each of them are 1 32nd of a teaspoon. And so I can take a little bit of powder, and then if we pry open the cake, we can get the scoop in to then get a bit of powder like down towards the center. In theory. <laughs> in theory, that's what we'll try to do. I'm now wearing my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. And let's start with our ballerina pink dye. So I think I want to use a little bit of this all over. It's going to be a little bit bright. So I'm going to take a scoop. Oh, that was easy. A nice scoop of powder. And then I'm not going in the very center. Oh, and I just spilled it. Well, that happened. Okay, we're going to try to put it towards the center-ish. And will it come out? Nope. Okay, we got that out. There's some on the outside too. Is what it is. Let's pick another little spot. More towards the outside. I'm opening that up and I don't know if it's even on camera. I'm trying to dump the scoop in as best I can. Okay, we'll do one more. Since this is the first color, uh, I'm using the same scoop, but once I do other colors, uh, I will not use the same scoop anymore. Okay, some got on the top, some of that's inside. We're good. I'm gonna wipe my hand on the yarn mop, cover up the dye. This is why we wear safety glasses. And I'm not gonna worry about the dye that's left in here. We'll do something with it. Okay, so the pink is a little bit all over. Okay, next I've got, I'm gonna do espresso bean. And the thing that I don't know is, I don't know the placement. Okay, I'm gonna just take this and shimmy it in 
side that did not very much. Oh god. Okay, and I just flung that. Uh, it mostly landed on the yarn mop and on the counter, but I'm going to go clean the floor and see if it ended up anywhere else since I'm going to cover this. So I don't know if there was some pink on my glove or some pink on the ground, but the espresso bean wasn't on the ground. So let's try this again. We're going to take the old spoon, put that on the yarn mop. I'm going to take some of the espresso bean dye, pick a spot, and immediately dump it onto the outside. You know, sometimes things are really good in theory, but are less good in practice. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. True black with a new spoon. Okay, let's go some in the very center. And I didn't even separate things, I just stuck it in. See, the problem is I feel like I end up adding things on the same layers. And I know I just went into this again. Um, I'm going to add some dye there. Nope, there's pink right there. Add some dye there. This <laughs> is quickly becoming a very uh, interesting project. A very messy project. But hey, this is why I try things out. Okay, some olive brown. We're going to go in towards the outside. And I can actually see some of that powder. Some of it's on top. That is fine. I'm trying to remember to get different different like spoons come on out okay even though I'm of course using the exact same spoon okay what if I set the spoon down and then find a spot where I want the dye to go insert it in Okay. The problem is like, you know, this worked well when I tried it with candy hearts once because I went from like the interior to the exterior. Come on. But this is a lot harder doing it this way. And I might be using way too much dye. Now I'm just inserting it randomly. Come on, come out. So these dyes aren't necessarily going to spread out very far uh, once we add water. They may stay pretty near where we put them. But yeah, now, oh, I'm going to put the cover on our dye. And I'm going to take our cake and attempt to roll it in some of this dye and just get a little bit of that on the outside. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it all goes. <laughs> I have no idea what this is going to look like. But next, uh, we need to set up our dye pot so we can try to dye this. Okay, right here I have a kettle of hot water with no acid. There's no acid in here yet. Uh, yes, that's the way I want to do it. I'm going to take the yarn cake and just set it on. And watch it sink in. Uh, I knew that this would work well with this particular yarn because stroll absorbs water so easily. And now that as soon as the last little bit is mostly wet, 
I'm now going to add three tablespoons of white vinegar and we're going to clean up some of these dyes around here. But I'm going to be letting this sit. It's been about three minutes since I last stopped recording and the thing to notice right away is we're seeing a lot of dark colors towards that center and not a lot of color is coming out. I considered adding more dye to the outside, but I think I'm not going to do that. I think we're gonna let this be as it is. I do see what looks like some evidence of some speckling and stuff on the outside, which is really, really cool. I'm still just surprised, probably because I added a lot of those deeper pigments in the middle and was this the end side I was adding from or the other side? I think this was. So a lot of them may be towards the top as well. So I am so curious to see what will happen. But I'm going to let this sit in this warm dye bath. We're not on heat right now for I think another 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna bring it to the stove and apply some heat. And I'm doing that because I don't wanna move it right now because moving it could shift what the colors are doing. And I want to allow some time for things to maybe strike where they are because it looks pretty cool. It's been 15 minutes and I haven't seen a huge change here. So I'm now gonna take the pot over to the stove. All right, so as we moved, I do want to report that the yarn cake is absolutely sitting on the bottom of the pan. But as it moved, I did see like a hair of some color come out. But look at those speckles on the side. It's so cool looking. I wonder if that's gonna stick around. Oh, I don't know. Part of me really wants to go and press it, um, especially as the top is now looking just sort of like damp but I'm trying to resist, trying real hard to resist. Oh man. But yeah, I'm gonna heat this up um, because it was warm, but I'm gonna go ahead and heat it for 30 minutes and then we'll come back, I guess, and move it. Ooh, are we getting acid towards the center? I don't know because we have added it in. Ooh. No, after 30 minutes, we'll press it. We'll give it 30 minutes, we'll press, see if a bunch of color comes out, and then talk about what to do. We'll do that. I'll see you in 30 minutes. And as for our yarn mop, which is in the sink, um, I did pour a little bit of vinegar on top of it. And we added like a little bit of water. So you see that is looking a little clearish. But I'm looking because there's some areas that don't have as much color and there's some dye still in some of these little spoons. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to mop up all this color and then we'll go ahead and steam this, set this in a steamer basket off camera for 30 minutes. It has been 30 minutes. I just turned the heat to the lowest setting. And the dye bath has cleared, which is great. But now we're going to push it down. And for all we got a little bit of that coming out, we're going to be moving it for the first time, pushing it down. I'm not seeing anything move. Ooh, look how white the bottom is. Oh, that's cool. That means that we're going to definitely have variation in there because the top of this is so dark. Um, I'm super excited. I'm going to let this, I'm going to turn off the heat, and I'm going to leave this to cool in the dye bath for a little while. I'm really glad that like pressing it didn't shift anything around, that we didn't see like dye come out. That's great. Um, and then once the pot cools more, I'll remove this and we'll give it a light wash, a light initial wash before uh, we unravel it. But of course, to unravel a yarn cake, I usually let it dry a couple of days so that way I'm not flinging water everywhere. <laughs> Before we go wash our yarn cake, let's just look at its beauty for a minute because it might unravel a little bit as we go. We've got beautiful speckling along the outside. The bottom, as I noted, is very, very white. I think that because of the way the cake sunk in, the dyes moved up instead of down because water had already soaked into the bottom and a lot of the colors we added were closer to the top. Like, you can see that looks like a spot where we added a little bit. Um, ooh, I see a little bit of green, probably from that olive breaking. 
Ooh, fun. Okay, I'm not gonna peek too much more. Let's go wash it. I'm very happy that we both had some colors spread, but also some of the colors are placed just sort of where we put them still. That is exciting. Now, there's still a chance that the outside of the blank is gonna feel quite different <laughs> from the inside, but we'll see. All right, I've taken a little bit of some dish soap, and I'm gently pressing the cake to just take some of that liquid in, but we're not seeing any color bleeding. I always recommend with cake dyeing that you do another washing stage after you have unwound the cake. That's because it's possible that we could have some powders that are just kind of trapped in the middle and you're going to want to wash that out. Um, but for now, I'm going to rinse up the soap, put it through my spin dryer using the yarn mop to counterbalance it, and then we'll kind of perch it on a drying rack to dry before we come back and unwind it. So yeah, we'll let it, let it dry out for a couple of days. It's been a day or two, and so it is much drier, and so it'll be easier to unravel it without stretching or blocking the yarn too much. Uh, but I thought that we would just take a nice little close-up of the yarn cake. The color combinations and speckling we see on the outside are absolutely gorgeous. And I'll try to check in as we go more towards the center to see what the patterns are like. We definitely have some bright pink, but we do see some of that on the outside. Ooh, goody, there's more. And I saw, I think I saw some of the deeper pinks in here as well. Ooh, look at that blue. Oh, interesting. It's like a really a lot of blue, but anyway, we've got browns, we've got golden colors, and so now I'm going to start winding it onto my PVC pipe nitty knotty, and I'm going to wind from the outside in, I think, and I'll check back in. I don't think I'm far enough into the unraveling to notice a huge difference yet. There's a tiny bit of deeper color at the end, but it is getting a little bit more noticeably white uh, around the outside of the cake. I'm very happy how things are progressing. You can definitely see some of these points where I've inserted dyes and how they're mostly towards the top. That's why we have so much white down here because when it soaked in, the dyes started to dissolve and then it sort of pushed them up towards the top. There is some asymmetry starting, but I'm happy because there's elements of it that are traveling more through the yarn. We'll see if it feels a little bit gradient-y. I mean, I think it does a little bit, but I'm very happy with like the cohesion in it so far. It doesn't feel like, and I think we're maybe like a third of the way through winding it, it doesn't feel like it's a two different colorways yet. Some of the differences in here still feel subtle, but are getting more pronounced. We're getting more variegated as we go through, and it's more speckled soft towards the outside, which, I mean, makes sense when you take a look at the cake. And ooh, we're going to bring in some black. Um, so the colors are going to shift a little bit, but I think all these colors are so subtle that that might bring some subtlety into... Are you? I think I could have done a better job spacing the colors, like having some more towards the center and more towards the outside, but I really wanted there to be cohesion to the gradient we have going on. And there are like more soft speckles on the outside. In the middle, there are still some soft speckles transitioning to the variegated. So I do think we have a gradient of types. This is why I sometimes like to start unraveling from the middle because sometimes that very middle section pops out but there's so little yarn left now that I think what I'm just going to do is start at the end and unravel it that way so then I have an easier time winding onto the Nitty Knotty. And here is our yarn cake all unraveled. Is this a very extreme gradient? No. Um, yes, we have soft speckles. We go into a much more heavily variegated patch. And then at the end, there's just a lot of white with just a few patches of color. So there is a symmetry to here, which makes this really unique. And I love the way this yarn turned out. However, I don't think I'm gonna be doing this again. <laughs> and that's because it 
it was challenging to put the, the colors in. It was challenging to know where I'd place the colors as I was dealing with other messes. And so it would be hard to plan out colors to try to get asymmetry. And you may end up with something that just feels variegated, which still can be fine and cool. I just think that it may not be worth all the effort. But there's no question that we've got some really, really beautiful notes. That blue I pointed out earlier is just sort of towards this one end. Don't know where exactly that came from, but I love this color combination and 100% would play with it more. Now I am going to uh, put a zip tie on here and go wash the blank. I think I'm gonna do that off camera unless I notice anything significant, like any bleeding. I'm not expecting there to be any, so I'm gonna wash it, put it through the spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. And this is mainly because it's hard to rinse the middle of the yarn cake, and so, again, I'll pop back in if there's something noticeable. Otherwise, we're gonna go look at this next to our yarn mop. And now we have our washed and dried gradient yarn next to the yarn mop, which is so soft and subtle. And some of the colors in here are so sharp. There's so much contrast between the white and deep. But the yarn mop does play with it really well, especially some of that outside color. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And please don't take my negativity of the technique. And I know some of you in the comments might be like, Rebecca, don't be hard on yourself, or Rebecca, you're not being that negative. But I tend to be very happy and pleased with techniques and results so much that even though I have a positive approach, I think it is also important for me to highlight things that I don't care for as much or that I don't love as much. I might love the result, but the stress of potentially flinging dye everywhere, especially when I'm dying out of my kitchen, just isn't worth it to me. And so take that what you will, but I guess if I had my dream studio with concrete floor, I still wouldn't want to make a mess. I would never want to make a mess in flame dye, but I might be less worried about having a massive spill of dye staining my hardwood floor <laughs> or something like that. I do try to uh, use techniques that are more controlled and then don't have a lot of splash. And when things might be messier, I try to bring that outside. It's just noisier out there. And then sometimes my neighbors watch and wonder what I'm doing. <laughs> and turn on notifications. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. All of this really does help support the content here. Thank you so much for watching.